Is it for the Old Testament saints or does it apply now? The time. The reason why God wanted me to deal with this is because there's many preachers that preach it that is not good for you to obey that command. But we're going to trace this thing from the Old Testament even until the New Testament. Are you with me? Amen. Because it is God's will, he said, above all, I wish that ye prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosper. Now, typically, I usually pray before the messages, but worship has went forth, so prayer has already went forth. Glory to God. So in order for us to be blessed, we have to do it according to God's way. There is no scripture that has ever spoken that we're not responsible to pay tithes and offer. Come on, say amen now. Amen. And here's the breakdown and how that goes. Every pastor has a shepherd. Wait a minute now. You say, every pastor has a shepherd? Yes. Every pastor has a shepherd. Or one that is his covering. Or one that has room over him. The one that has room over him. Amen. And being that you have a shepherd over a shepherd, then if you have a church, it is your responsibility to pay tithes and offering to your cover. And if you're an individual lay person, then it's your responsibility to pay tithes and offering to your local church. This is a command. This is a command of God. Amen. And we're going to show you in scripture where that's true. Amen. Amen. Our first scripture will be coming from First scripture will be coming from Genesis, the 14th chapter. Beginning at the 13th verse. If you got that, we're going to read that. Say amen. 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 The 
The Bible tells us in the 13th verse, it says, and, it, and there came one that had escaped and told Abraham, the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of his skull, brother of Adner. And these were confederate with Abraham. And when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his house, 318, and persuaded them unto Dan. And he divided himself against them, he and his servants, by night, and smote them and pursued them to Hobah, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods and also brought back, uh, also brought again his brother Lot and his goods, and the women also, and the people. Giving you a reference of what we're looking at is where Abraham went to rescue Lot from Sodom and Gomorrah. The scripture tells us that Lot separated from Abraham because they could not get along living together. And because of that separation, Lot thought he knew more than Abraham. And the Bible says Lot lifted up his eyes toward the plain of Sodom and Gomorrah because he saw that it was well watered and it flourished with plenty. Glory to God. How many of you know that it's stupid not to listen to the man of God? The Bible tells us that Abraham told Lot, let there be no strife between us. He said, because of all this ruckus, you can separate from me. And the Bible declares that Lot chose Sodom and Gomorrah, and when he went to Sodom and Gomorrah, there he ended up in trouble. To the point that Abraham had to come and rescue, you, rescue him out of his battles. Abraham reminds me of the parable of the prodigal son. Even though Abraham had messed, I mean, even though Lot had messed up, Abraham still went to rescue him. Glory to God. The Bible declares that he brought back all the spoils of his fight. And he brought also back Lot's spoils also. And it picks up at the 17th verse and it says, And the king of Sodom went out to meet, at, meet him after his return from the slaughter of Shalomar, 